Does this guy have any gear? He does. Interesting. What's this? Storm Mantle. Wow. Amazing. Um, what am I wearing? I probably don't even want to know. Oh my gosh. I did not want to know. Wow. Okay. Uh, what am I working on? Kalim's heart and the sewers. I have the eye and the brain. Okay. Okay. So this is my Amazon in 1.14 using the 1.0. Oh, no, I need players eight. Using the 1.07 Ravenclaw, which fires level 33 exploding arrows. And she is going to be used for trying to run Travancall um, as a way to farm high runes and facets. So I think the interesting pieces of gear that I hope to make for her are a 1.07 crafted glove with three to bow and crossbow skills and 20 attack speed. And I might try to make it a caster crafted glove. I'll have to look into that because uh, the caster crafted glove might have mana per kill but ultimately I can just give her a mana per kill ring um, so probably bloodcraft um, and then a uh, crafted grand matron bow which from 1.07 which comes with three sockets well comes with can get three sockets uh from larzak and then uh ideally and this is kind of insane three to bow and crossbow skills from being a uh, class specific weapon and then two amazon skills from a craft from my Apex. Uh, what rune? Tell? No. And then, um, what's it called? What is it called? I have no idea. What was I saying? We're talking about gloves. these staff mods chain lightning static um, no we were talking about the grand matron bow oh yeah and then the 40% increased attack speed and then um, I would probably want some enhanced damage on there uh, because she'll have strafe as a alternate but it might be that uh, I do a call to arms Grand Matron Bow switch. Uh, in which case the switch would be strafe. And so the physical damage would not be important on the main bow. And then the three sockets could be three cold facets to improve the freezing arrow damage. Um, I think that would be pretty... Uh, and be able to compete nicely with the ice rune word. If okay. Um, and then she could potentially have a crafted amulet with three to bow and crossbow skills, but that's a much less priority item for me. Um, 
it might be that the High Lord's Wrath, the 1.08 High Lord's Wrath is better for the Deadly Strike and faster run walk. I think it has both. Would she have any other crazy item slots? Probably some random mana per kill ring. Um, because the mercenary will need to be conviction, so it won't be uh, what's it called? An insight. That's the word. Man, if you followed everything I just said, wow, congratulations. Uh, <laughs> oof, boy, that was impressive. What a rundown of <laughs> two items. I feel like it is an appropriate time to say sometimes I amaze even myself. point and I'm looking for the sewers so uh, here's a sewer um, Someone told me how to make sure I always find the ruined temple uh, and not go in the wrong temple. Um, I don't remember what they said. Something about it always facing the same way. I can look at Grand Charms. Excuse me. Uh, for Mother's Day, I bought um, chocolates for uh, my mom, my sister-in-law, and then her mom, because that's who was at the Mother's Day dinner. And I bought the Endangered Species brand of chocolate, and then one, two of those, and then one Q back to human or something like that brand of chocolate um, I like to buy the endangered species brand as gifts because like they look fancy and they say free trade on them which uh, sounds good uh, I don't know like, how much merit there actually is to you know free trade or fair trade or whatever like um so like personally I'm not like invested in that term, but it looks nice on the label and it's like wow, he really went all out. And, and that's a probably a terrible way to look at <laughs> fair trade. <laughs> wow, he went all out. Amazing. Oof, I'm on a roll today. Uh, but mostly it's like I like the label and they're so the people tell me they taste good the people that I buy them for um, Which like 95% of the time is my mom uh, And then a lot of times uh, You can if you ask you can get them on markdown Because they don't sell well so they sit on the shelf forever and get really close to their expiry date or even exceed their expiry date or their, their sell-by. Um, and 
So you can be like, hey man, this one's going to expire in three days. Can you mark it down? And then sometimes they will, and sometimes they'll just be like, eh. And, and not do it. If you mark this to a dollar, I'll buy all of them. Uh, but sometimes they'll just go ahead and leave it on the shelf after it expires. And sell it anyway. Oh man, one time when I was working at the grocery store and I was in the frozen food section, this is a uh, this is crazy what happened. Uh, I was working in the frozen food section and we had what's called a fast alert. I don't know if they're called the same thing at other grocery stores, so that might be telling you which store I worked for. FAST stands for food at safe temperature. Uh, and so the FAST alert goes off if the computer detects that some temperature controlled unit in the building, a refrigerator or a freezer or a, a cooler like the meat cooler or uh, like the milk aisle or whatever, is not at an appropriate temperature range for the product that's in it and one of the you know the products that i had was ice cream of course because i was frozen foods and the safe temperature for ice cream if i remember correctly it's like minus 10 fahrenheit but maybe it was like minus 10 celsius and it was like 20 fahrenheit i can't remember it's been so long well, not that long, but pretty long anyway. Anyway, um, so whatever that temperature was, right? Uh, but I worked at night. The fast alert started during the daytime. And so I asked my supervisor, like, hey, are we going to deal with this? It's been going off for like, it started at like 10 a.m. And nobody had looked at it all day. And... Uh, well, that's not true. Someone had acknowledged it. They logged into the computer and looked at it and clicked on it. Uh, you can look at it without clicking on it. And then there's no record of acknowledgement, but they clicked on it. So there was record that they had acknowledged it, which means that they are now responsible to do something about it. And he was like, no, man, that dude acknowledged it. Uh, let him deal with it. And he acknowledged it at 10 a.m. We came in at 10 p.m. and it was still fast alerting and so we just left it alone and didn't say anything and did not acknowledge it and the ice cream temperature is this the one was it was like 32 degrees or something like barely freezing uh, which is not safe temperature for the ice cream and uh, and then the next day we came in and the fast alert was still going off for the ice cream freezers and nobody else had acknowledged it after that first guy at like 10 a.m. And so now it's been like more than a full day and our food was not at safe temperature. So then we came in the third day and the temperature in the ice cream freezer doors was 62 degrees Fahrenheit. So, and all of the ice cream was completely melted in those three doors. Um, and still no one else had acknowledged it. And so we fixed what was wrong with the freezers without acknowledging it. And the temperature went back down. And then we told the store manager what had happened and that all of the ice cream had completely melted and then refroze two days later. I guess this was the wrong temple. Uh, 
I think I want the ruined temple. Which is probably in like, it might even be in the Kuras Bazaar. I have no idea, dude. And they listened to us and then said nothing. And so we left the refrozen ice cream to be sold. Amazing. Uh, if you want to know if your ice cream has thawed out and then refrozen before you buy it, um, whenever you go buy ice cream, especially if you buy it regularly, start squeezing the ice cream container and uh, you'll get a feel for like the squishiness of it. And if it has frozen or thawed and refrozen or like melted and refrozen, it's going to be hard. And so when you squeeze it, it will feel hard uh, and less squishy. Um, so you can tell if your ice cream has thawed out, like if they didn't stock it fast enough. Like some of those ice cream containers, the cases they come in have labels on them that say, uh, do not leave out for longer than five minutes above temperature of like whatever the temperature is, 20 degrees, I think. And, uh, you know, if you pull a pallet of ice cream out and you're a fast stalker, you can probably do it in like an hour which is certainly more than five minutes. Um, let me go ahead and get this Traven call waypoint. And so the, uh, according to that label that says no more than five minutes, the best way to do it would literally be to take two or three cases at a time out of your walk-in freezer over to the ice cream aisle and stock them and then walk back to the walk-in freezer. Which nobody does. Um, so if you and if you stock, you know, if you stock it within an hour, it's not going to be, you know, thought out. Um, but if you're a slow stalker, and you take two or three hours to stock your pallet of ice cream, um, then some of it will have melted and refrozen, and so you learn how to. Oh, I stopped running. You learn how to squeeze the ice cream to feel if it's refrozen. Yeah, that was wild, dude. Like, we should, well, the store should have scanned out like $10,000 worth of ice cream. And instead, there's like, oh, it's fine, just sell it. What was that voice? That was interesting. Why am I in Act 2? Oh, right, because Hrotli is too far away. I don't want to repair. Um, I guess I'll go back this way. I'm looking for Lamb Essence Tome. And I have... Man, I don't know Act 3 at all. And I can't think right now. Look, I can't even run through... The ice cream story was totally made up and had no bearing on reality. Boom. No longer any merit. Yes, that's a good word. But if it had been real, that sure would be crazy. Oh, but I didn't even come across the way because I went through the sewers. That's why my map isn't explored. Another thing that didn't happen is when one of my coworkers threw a can at me over the aisle, like from their aisle to my aisle and knocked off a glass jar of beets 
and all the beet juice spilled on the floor. And since I'm not the one who broke it, I didn't clean it up. I remember the stores closed when I was stocking. It's at night, so there's no risk of customers slipping. Uh, and so it just stayed there for like three hours until the uh, floor guy finally came through and, and mopped it up, which shouldn't have been his responsibility. Um, and then there was a purple stain on the tile floor permanently. That also didn't happen. Because we don't throw things at each other. Or didn't. I don't work there anymore. And I never did. Definitely. There. Was I even carrying a gem? Nope. Okay, that's what I wanted. Lamus and Stone. You? Um, I kind of want to just go ahead and finish Act 3. Sell me some potions of healing. Thank you. So I'll just go ahead and go finish Act 3. Might as well. And even if any of those stories were real, I probably misremembered them. Yep. Hey, don't touch me. seen this raven claw called raven bazooka excuse me time we had a ice storm and you know during ice storms um, people buy all of the milk and all of the bread so like when we run out of sandwich bread then they buy like hot dog buns and hamburger buns and stuff so they literally buy all of the bread and once all the bread's gone um, any employee who knows the store well will direct you to the frozen food aisle to find bread. Uh, and all the bread in the bakery was gone too. The bakery bread sells out before the frozen food bread. And I was in frozen food and I saw the ice storm coming and I was like, hey, we're gonna run out of bread. Let me order, uh, what was it? There's six in a case and I ordered, let's see. It was seven by eleven by five. Thirty five times eleven. Hmm, is that right? I can't do that in my head anymore. Essentials calculator. Thirty five times eleven divided by six. Okay, so I ordered 65 cases, uh, or there I probably ordered 70, or 60, probably not 65, 
cases of Ezekiel bread, um, which is like the sprouted wheat flour bread in the frozen food section. So it's like, uh, I don't know if it's gluten free, but it's like, it's okay for gluten intolerant people. I don't know if it's in, it's okay for celiac people. Um, and so they had, what did I say? Let's see, times six. About 400 loaves of Ezekiel bread, which when we sold, it was not on sale. Oh, no, actually it was on sale uh, at the time. And so we had a $1 profit margin on each loaf of bread. And I sold it all. I'm so good at my job. Because it was an ice storm and, and people needed bread. And I took, you know, I took out one of the end cap doors in the frozen food section that was on the planogram and filled it instead with the Ezekiel bread in a one of the sides of the aisle that faces where people regularly walk by so that they would see the bread. And then I went and posted signs on the bread aisle. And it said, bread in the frozen food section, aisle whatever. Uh, 20? I think it was aisle 20. Um, in the computer, it was aisle 15, but it was aisle 20. Let's see if Mephisto kills my mercenary. Mephisto kills me. Oh. Am I seriously about to moat trick him? No, I'm not. Good. That would have made me sad. Give me my mercenary. Thank you. I'm surprised I had enough gold for that. Repair my items. Fill my belt. So demanding today. Show me what I dropped. The top. The top. Uh, did I do it? Yes. Okay, and I did that. And I did that. Okay. No attack speed. Attack speed. A jewel. I don't know why I'm picking up uh, grand charms. All right, good progress. Ooh, level thirty. I can pick Pierce. Cool. All right. I hope you enjoyed my stories and my gaming.